in the post since Easter, uh, I've been focusing on the theme of Jesus' resurrection to receive all authority in heaven and earth as God's appointed king. Uh, not uh, so much in reference to his divine nature, but his human nature. He was given all authority as a man, the authority that Adam lost, Jesus has more than regained. And uh, that authority is over all things in heaven and earth. Uh, therefore, we pray in the Lord's Prayer with authority, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we were saying that in the midst of this pandemic and uh, uh, global crisis and in, uh, in any crisis or any events on earth, it is God's people who are the key to all events because we are the ones who pray with that authority for God's will to be done and accomplished according to his purpose through Jesus. The government is on Jesus' shoulder. But we're also saying that not only is Christ ruling over all things, he is ruling for us, for his church. And God the Father, who in his infinite goodness wants to pour out the riches of his glory and grace uh, upon creatures like us, has uh, done so by uh, giving all of that grace and glory to the Lord Jesus uh, in his humanity as king. And Jesus as king distributes that to us uh, who have given our allegiance to him. And so uh, God in his infinite grace and goodness has committed that goodness to us in his promises. And those promises are yes in Jesus. And as we claim the promises in Jesus' name and through Jesus' kingship, uh, we receive the promises in our lives. And we were saying, therefore, that that is what gives us hope. We're in a kingdom of hope because God's promises to show us his goodness give us hope even while we live under the sun in a life that is full of frustration and uh, what the preacher calls vanity. And then we were touching on two of the great hopes that are to uh, give light and joy to our lives here, in which we are to claim uh, in prayer. The first is the hope of being with Jesus where he is, sharing his reign, and ultimately when he returns in resurrection bodies, reigning with him, in a shared inheritance that the Father has promised him and us as his brothers and co-heirs. Uh, and so the hope of glory is something that, uh, as Calvin says, the concept of the uh, heavenly life, as he, he calls it, is something that should fill our minds every day and be a focus of our prayers, that we are going to be with him and we pray that we will be with him. Uh, that's the destination that we're headed for. And it helps us remember that this life is not a permanent home uh, and never will be. Then we were also looking at the other great promise that gives us hope that starts the beginning of our journey, which is the promise of forgiveness of sins. That through uh, sheer pure grace and the atoning death of Jesus, the Father promises to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, not just at the start of the journey, but all the way through. And that's why uh, the great uh, um, part of the Lord's Prayer, the supplicatory part, uh, the prayer for forgiveness, plays such a prominent part. So we have the hope of glory. We have the hope of forgiveness of sins. And the third great hope of the Christian life, now that Jesus has been exalted <laughs> as a man to the Father's right hand, is that we will be like him that we will be transformed into his likeness. And where the image of God was ruined uh, in Adam in the garden by Satan, so now in union with Christ, that uh, image is being restored and recreated. And that's because not only is Jesus exalted in heaven, not only are our sins forgiven, but by the power of the Spirit, we have a union with him that is a real living union as the head with the members of our body, or as a bridegroom with the bride. That union is by the power of the Holy Spirit, who imparts to us the nature of the Lord Jesus, and is gradually transforming us into his likeness. And this is a promise that God wants us to claim, and is 
to be as much a part of our prayers as the forgiveness of sins, uh, that we might be more and more like the Lord Jesus through this union with the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said, when the Spirit comes, the Father and the Son will come to us and make their home in us. Or Paul says and prays so powerfully for the Ephesians that Christ will dwell in their hearts by faith. And what he means by that is that Christ will impart himself to us in our hearts. And so the next few hymns are going to focus on that great hope that despite all our weaknesses and failures and corruption, God is at work transforming us into the image of his Son and taking great delight in that. And uh, this hymn today is really on that theme. May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day. May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day by his love and power controlling all I do or say. May the word of God dwell richly in my heart from hour to hour, so that all may see I triumph only through his power. May the peace of God my Father rule my heart in everything, that I may be come to comfort sick and sorrowing. May the love of Jesus fill me as the waters fill the sea, him exalting self abasing, this is victory. I run the race before me, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only on to Jesus as I onward go. May his beauty rest upon me as I seek the lost to win. May they forget the channel, see 